So in this video, I want to talk about the idea that it is in some sense problematic or even hypocritical for white people to complain about affirmative action because white women have been the primary beneficiaries of affirmative action. This is a claim that is made often in popular press, but as we're about to see, it's normally made on the basis of uh, very poor evidence. So for instance, there was an article published in Teen Vogue this year which claimed that, quote, it comes as a surprise to many to discover that white women have benefited more from affirmative action programs and policies than any other demographic. The evidence presented for this is just a citation to a 2007 essay by Kimberly Crenshaw in which she says, quote, the primary beneficiaries of affirmative action have been Euro-American women, uh, but no evidence for this proposition is actually given. In 2016, there was an article appearing in Vox which said that, quote, the primary beneficiaries of affirmative action have been Euro-American women, wrote Columbia University law professor Kimberly Crenshaw for the University of Michigan Law Review in 2006. A 1995 report by the California Senate Government Organization Committee found that white women held a majority of managerial jobs compared with African Americans, Latinos, and Asian Americans after the first two decades of affirmative action in the private sector. Now this is the same Crenshaw citation as I just dealt with. So there's no evidence there. Uh, as for the California Senate report, it just obviously does not follow that because white women have gained more managerial jobs since the beginning of affirmative action, that affirmative action has caused those gains. Uh, there are lots of other alternative obvious explanations, such as more white women in that period deciding to enter the workforce or more of them going to college. Uh, to attribute all of those gains to affirmative action with no evidence uh, is not remotely legitimate. Looking at another mainstream source, in 2013, an article appeared in Time which claimed that, quote, while people of color individually and as a group have been helped by affirmative action in the subsequent years, data and studies suggest women, white women in particular, have benefited disproportionately. According to one study, in 1995, 6 million women, the majority of whom were white, had jobs they wouldn't have otherwise held but for affirmative action. Now, the article in Time does not cite a primary source for this claim. Rather, they cite an article by Tim Wise, a well-known sort of fraudulent race hustler type, uh, who in his article claims that, quote, according to a 1995 study, there were at least 6 million women, the overwhelming majority of them white, who simply wouldn't have the jobs they have today, but for the inroads made by affirmative action. And the Tim Wise article does not cite a primary source for this. It cites a book by Coase in 19, 1997. Uh, you go to that book and turn to page 171, and then that book says, The Working Woman Special Report on Affirmative Action also cited a N95 study by Alfred Blumrosen, a professor at the Rutgers University of Law School uh, and consultant to the Labor Department, suggesting that, quote, estimated 6 million women wouldn't have had the jobs they have today were it not for the inroads made by affirmative action. Now, in the first place, notice that this is still not citing a primary source. This is citing an article that referred to a study. And so we're like six citations in before we get to the primary source. And this is not the kind of journalistic standard you might think an organization like Time would follow if you take those organizations seriously anyhow. But also notice that this book says nothing about the racial composition of the women who were given jobs. So that this element, the racial element, is a lie which was invented by Tim Wise when he dishonestly cited this. And then Time Magazine amplified the lie that Tim Wise began. Now that said, let's get to the actual primary source. And this uh, report from 1995 says, It is modest to point out that five and one half million minority employees are in higher level jobs than they would have been under the occupational distribution of 1960 and that 6 million women have moved into executive, managerial, professional, and sales jobs since 1972. This comparison totally fails to take into account the population sizes of these groups of minorities versus white women, because there are more white women, especially in this time period, than there are minorities. And so if you use the census demographic data from 1980, which is roughly the mean year of the time period under consideration, giving 6 million jobs to white women would mean that one in every 17 white women got a job via affirmative action, and giving five and a half million jobs to non-whites would mean that one in every five non-whites were given a job via affirmative action. So that even if we assume that all six million jobs that went to women went to white women, this would still disproportionately show a benefit 
for minorities if this was actually a measure of jobs given due to affirmative action, which it absolutely is not. There is no evidence given that these job gains are due to affirmative action. When the report says that, quote, women have moved into executive, managerial, professional, and sales jobs since 1972, that 6 million women have done so, uh, there's just no reason given to think that all 6 million jobs were somehow caused by affirmative action. And again, given that we know what ha was happening in America at that time with respect to women in the workplace, the social norms that were changing, especially among white women, feminism at that time, it is not even, it's not even plausible on its face that all 6 million jobs would be due to affirmative action. That's just ridiculous. And so hopefully what is clear is that the popular press has pushed this narrative on the basis of lying, on the basis of citing other essays, just saying things, but with no evidence given at all, uh, and on the basis of research methodologies that make no sense as measures of jobs gained via affirmative action. So turning away from the silliness that is the popular discourse, uh, to actually attempting to measure the impact of affirmative action, the best methodology available is to compare the rate at which various groups' employment grew among firms doing federal contract work, and for those that don't know, firms that engage in federal contract work in the United States are mandated by law to follow various affirmative action policies, and so we can compare the growth rates in employment among federal contracting firms to the rate at which those same groups grew in non-contract firms. And so using this approach for data covering 1970 to 1980, Smith 1984 found that affirmative action had a small positive effect on employment for white women, but a much larger positive effect for blacks of both sexes. And the most dramatic benefit was for black men, who in 1980 accounted for 11.6% of managers and officials in non-contract firms, but 44% of them in firms with federal contracts. Now, intuitively, I would think that affirmative action giving a small benefit to white women in the 1970-1980 period very much leaves the door open for a negative impact over a longer time period as sort of woke cultural norms have moved from emphasizing feminism to emphasizing uh, racial inequality. And indeed, uh, there's a 2016 paper which looked at data from 1973 to 2013, and it found that white women were the primary victims of affirmative action uh, in federal contract work, and they write quite explicitly that, quote, affirmative action increased the employment of black and Native American women and men at the expense of white women. Now, a somewhat less uh, rigorous approach is to survey private firms, regardless of contractor status, and see whether firms claiming to support affirmative action predicts who they employ. Now, this method warrants less confidence than the previous method because we can doubt the validity of firms self-reporting whether they utilize affirmative action, and in some cases even who they employ. And if you look at this methodology, uh, the research findings are a bit all over the place, uh, despite there only being a couple studies that I can find that do this. So one from 1999 finds that, quote, affirmative action is associated with an increase of about 15% in the probabilities of hiring white women and black men. On the other hand, uh, the probability that a white man is hired is lower by about 20% under affirmative action. So that in this paper, white women are tied with black men for being the group that benefited the most, but the negative effect on white men was still large enough uh, such that the net effect on whites was still negative. Another research team in a combination of papers from 2006 and 2003 found that supporting affirmative action predicted an increase in the chances that they employ blacks, but had no relationship with the probability that they employed white women. So that this paper would suggest that white women haven't benefited at all from affirmative action. Uh, the third paper I could find on this produced pretty different results, but its design was also a bit different. So this paper begins by documenting the rise of various forms of affirmative action in private firms between 1970 and 2002. And that's the first thing to note, um, aside from just affirmative action is extremely widespread now and has been for decades, but also that this data is based on older data compared to the other studies I was just looking at. And it's also only looking at the impact of affirmative action policies on being hired as a manager, which is obviously just a subset of the total number of jobs affirmative action is going to impact. And the result, when they break it down by a bunch of different affirmative action policies, is that which group benefits the most depends on which affirmative action policy you look at, although there's a consistent pattern, or the most consistent pattern anyway, across policies of negatively impacting uh, white men's employment chances. So that said, this data does paint a somewhat better looking picture for white women than the other research I've looked at, but again, it's relying somewhat on older data and based on only a single job that you do at a firm, and so can't be taken to contradict the rest of the data, which we can say, I think, with fairly high confidence that overall this data suggests that white women have not been the greatest beneficiaries of affirmative action, and that in fact the best data we have available 
suggests that if anything, white women have been negatively impacted, so that they haven't benefited at all on net from affirmative action. Uh, at least if we're talking about employment. And uh, in terms of universities, I actually haven't been able to find any studies that break down the effect of affirmative action by sex. That said, we know that compared to a white student, a black student controlling for qualifications uh, is about 21 times more likely to be able to get into a university. For Hispanics, it's about three times more likely. So that even if there is a positive effect for white women, it is massively overly made up for by the negative effect on white men. There's no reason to really think that there is a positive effect for white women, though. Women in general make up a greater proportion of the student population than do men. So the white women are probably the demographic best represented in the college population as it stands, and so I doubt that their representation sort of needs to be artificially increased uh, by affirmative action. And so in any case, what I hope is clear now is that the relationship between white women and affirmative action does not in any sense make it problematic or hypocritical uh, for white people or white women to complain about affirmative action, let alone the general uh, anti-white insanity that has taken over our country the last couple decades. So anyway, that's the video. Uh, consider liking or commenting if you liked it. Consider supporting the channel materially if you're a big fan of it. Uh, and in any case, thanks for watching.